Thank you. By show of hands, who of you have ever worked on something similar to this? This. Fantastic. But this talk is not only related to many of you who worked on something similar. It is also dedicated to those who wish to shift their mindset to become more flexible. It was 7.30 in the morning and I was sitting by my professor's office door waiting for him to come to blow the news about the latest achievement that I had been working on for the past weeks and to show him how I enhanced an electrical circuit that worked as a radio at that time to become smaller. I admit I was a nerd, looking through the traditional engineering lens at that time. But years later, I looked again at my magical circuit, but with another lens. I realized that people didn't actually need a smaller circuit that I worked on for too long. Yet, they needed one with more efficient outcomes, such as wider coverage and clearer voice. This pure traditional engineering mindset that I had at that time let me fall into the risk of translating a book that will never be read. Personally, being an engineer who worked in the technical, in the business and on the entrepreneurial fields, and recently being the only Jordanian who, who won the Stevie Award this year. Thank you. I struggled between looking through the traditional engineering lens or through another lens that I would call the entrepreneurial engineering lens. Until I realized that I don't have to look through these lenses separately. Same person can look through them as exact as multifocal ones, depending on the situation. Now I want you all to give me an answer in a really loud voice, a really loud voice. One plus one equals Two. amazing. And that's obvious. So traditional engineers also agree. If we look through the traditional engineering lens, we will always see that one plus one will lead us to two. Traditional engineers usually work in order to reach to that one right definite solution for their types of problems. So if we say that one plus one is a problem, the one right definite solution for that problem would be two in the lens of the traditional engineers and in no matter which approaches we choose to take. But what are the approaches in order to reach to that definite solution? There are also some definite approaches. One plus one, obviously. Two plus zero, zero plus two. And the infinite definite approaches to reach to that definite solution. And on another, another related note, same approach will always lead us to the same solution. We can't have any other than two if we look through the traditional engineering lens at one plus one. While if we look through the entrepreneurial engineering lens, the case might not be the same. We might not always see that one plus one will lead us to two. Because entrepreneurial engineers don't see one right definite solution for their types of problems. Instead, they see multiple right solutions, yet they classify them to be good, better, or the best solution. But this classification is always dependent on the time, on the market needs, on the place, and on too many other factors. And accordingly, we can hardly say that we can get the same solution if we followed the same approach every time. To make it a bit more clear, Let's think of a product that is bundled with another product in a single prized package. This might or might not give us a higher value than the sum summation of the two products alone. As for example, who here likes cornflakes? Yay, delicious, isn't, aren't they? <laughs> so if we think of a pack of cornflakes that is bundled with a dairy milk in a single discounted price package, 
It might be more appealing for many people to buy this package rather than buying each of the products alone, which will, leave, which will lead to increase the number of sales. So see, one plus one here gives us a value that is higher than two. It might be fair to sell this package in some cities, but if we take the same package into another city that has high percentage of vegan population, the case might not be the same. Our package might not fly because people there will prefer to buy a pack of cornflakes alone and another non-dairy milk alone, which will lead our state package at a loss. So see, one plus one here gave us a lower value than two. What I mean to say is that the outcome is always dependent on some inner, some environmental, or some uncontrollable factors in the lens of the traditional, of the entrepreneurial engineers. But how do traditional and entrepreneurial engineers implement these solutions? As traditional engineers usually know the definite solution for their type of problems, they tend to take some definite approaches in order to reach to that solution. Yet, if they were faced by some obstacles like limited resources, limited time, or low budget for high cost approach, they prefer to stop rather than choosing another unknown or undefinite approach. Entrepreneurial engineers, on the other hand, they take some risky steps in order to overcome these obstacles. They challenge the status quo and they get out of their comfort zone in order to reach to the best solution they can. But to what extent do entrepreneurial and traditional engineers feel comfortable in taking such decisions? Traditional engineers usually prefer to take orders for implementing a project rather than suggesting new ideas. They enjoy this safe space where they don't have to make tough decisions. Entrepreneurial engineers, on the other hand, they love digging deeper to discover what people would like or what could make their lives much easier. Should I be making the solution is a question that is always in the back of their minds. They suggest what they know is needed and be totally responsible for their decisions. Now, by show of hands, who of you think in a traditional way? Yay. And who of you think in an entrepreneurial way? Cool. Some people got confused, some people raised their hand twice, and that's totally normal because as individuals, it would be hard to say that we should always look through the full extent of the traditional engineering lens or the full extent of the entrepreneurial lens. If you are technically working on a project, for example, you are most likely thinking in a traditional way, but you can always train yourself to awaken the entrepreneurial mindset when needed. We should be aware that each one of us has the combination of the two mindsets, but which mindset to use is always dependent on the type of work that you do and on your personal career path goals. But what do we need as organizations? Let's imagine an organization that has 100 employees who are all looking through the entrepreneurial engineering lens. There would be great mind-blowing ideas with amazing return on investment opportunities and with very attractive marketing campaigns. The real challenge would be to find traditional engineers who are willing to execute these ideas. While if we think of an organization with 100 employees who are all looking through the traditional engineering lens, they might fall again into my smaller radio circuit that nobody actually needed. An organization with employees that have the both mindsets is considered to be balanced. What makes it ideal though, is the combination, the connection between these two mindsets and the support they get from the upper management level in order to work smarter rather than harder to deliver what would customers fall in love with. As you might have already noticed, 
Being an entrepreneur who opens a startup is becoming a trend these days. It is fully encouraged by training programs, lots of events, accelerators and incubators are becoming easier to access and even investors are becoming easier to find. But still, there would be nothing wrong if you decide not to follow that trend. But make sure you always know when to think in an entrepreneurial or in a traditional way. Because whether you are a founder or an employee, what matters the most as a leader is your ability to assess, to know when, where, and to what extent do you have to look through the entrepreneurial or the traditional lenses and then to train your mind to think in both ways. And consequently, have a brain that is flexible enough to switch between the two mindsets seamlessly. Always imagine a multifocal entrepreneurial and traditional lenses in front of your eyes. Make sure they are clean enough for you to decide which mindset your vision requires to achieve your goals. Thank you. <laughs>